Welcome to the episode of Collective Coalition, the show about comics, movies, and more. I'm one of your hosts, Christian Bean. And with me is my co-host, an all right guy, I guess, Mario Benezzi. Hey. See, see, there's no, uh, there's no, like, this other description of the show because it's so short. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> this show's not going to have anything to it. Austin even asked if we should even bother doing it. I'm like, yeah, why not? I mean. We, we got books this week. We saw two movies. We did it. We're doing. We did. Shows, yeah, we did things for the show. The show was like gonna end up being like, I think at most an hour. Yeah, I can't see it going past that. Just because there's so little books this week, it's annuals week, so it's a bunch of annual stuff. Um, other than that, there's not much. Nah. Uh, he actually forgot to put one on here. Which one? Titans. Ooh, I don't have that on me. So I actually that's do. That's up to you. Uh. We are currently looking for the issue. So I guess we'll uh, jump what is... into... How you, how's your week going, Mario? How was your week? Uh, It was all right. Uh, I mean, I don't really have any stories. Nothing really fancy happened or anything entertaining. Um, I've got nothing, really. I'd... Yeah, I'm a lot I'd... of the same. I've got nothing going on with me, either. It's been kind of a slow week. Um, Not much has been happening, you know? Yeah, there's just not much going on for me. I mean... It's weird. Nothing's happened this week. It's so weird, man. Like, yeah. no comics. Nothing happening to us. Nah. I think the only thing that I, that's going on is that I want to finish a script by the 1st of April. Like barely any news. It's like... And it's been a hell of a writing it because um, me. Yeah, news is weird. Like it's like everybody decided to take a week off, and we didn't, of course, because we're scrubs that way. Hey, man, that's cool, man. It's cool, man. It's cool. Well, how much we got in the news? It's not a slow week. We haven't been doing anything. Yeah, I mean, it's... I got nothing. <laughs> uh, a buddy, a friend of mine, is writing an article for the website. Oh, really? Yeah, he was going to do. Uh, a thing about making uni- building universes, okay. film universes, but apparently, like something happened with Sony that frustrated him so much that he's writing a whole thing about why so the fact that the Sony still Sony- tries. This is story behind Sony and Spider Man. Is it about the that Silver- Venom thing? That and the Silver Stable Black Cat thing, and the yeah. recent thing where it sounds like Homecoming. We could lo- like we're not putting this in the news because it's all rumored for right now, but it seems like we could lose Homecoming after the sequel. I mean, it's not going to happen. They're going to release Venom. Venom's going to do poorly. Yeah, but Marvel's. Uh, that's just why would you sign a deal? Why Disney's got a, like a pretty tight grip on Spider-Man right now. It seems. Well, only in th- but they they have to renew the contract for the character. It's going to do well. It's Spider-Man. Oh, no, I, it's I, Marvel. I don't it's disagree. going to do well. I don't well. disagree. I just I just found it such a weird contract to sign. You know. Yeah, it's a weird contract to sign, but with the money that that it messes uh, me up, man. Well, with the money that up. this thing's gonna make, both through like you know the actual box office, yeah. and the amount of dollars that they're going to make from toys disney could easily buy their way out of that contract oh yeah like they well could, they could obliterate it's not really Sony. buying their way out of the contract is that they, they they're i they, guess they the best, i guess they put their lease up. they're leasing spider-man which is kind of weird it is so strange isn't it well i guess that's the the boat that you know you're in when you decide to sell out all your properties to as, various companies in the early out, 2000s that's my buddy pointing out his name is cody for all those interested he's going to help us write for the site occasionally as Cody pointed out, like, this is an unprecedented deal. Like, this is a deal that's never happened before with a major character yeah. being shared by studios. Like, it's a strange thing to happen. It's, it's new ground. So. It's kind of stupid. Yeah. But, you know. I don't the early 2000s should... were a weird time. Yeah, I don't think it should be that complicated, but that's just. I don't think it should be that complicated. I think it's no. a pretty simple problem, but that's just me. I'm a simple fella. I ain't too smart, you hear? He just now learned how to spell what was it box? No, it was uh, uh, exit top top T O P. Oh my god! <laughs> exit box four. <laughs> Keep just throwing out words, hope you get one. Yeah, I was hoping. <laughs> I, there's no no point in in uh, farting around, I guess. Yeah, just look at the news. All right, so first thing up in the news, something stupid that we wanted to put in because we're trying to pad out as much as we can. Justice League's runtime has been confirmed for two hours and fifty minutes, which in movie talk, which like is about one hundred and seventy minutes. Uh, so the movie's gonna premiere November seventeenth, twenty seventeen. That is a long movie. 
I do not want to see three hours of Zack Snyder just rubbing himself off. S- Snack Snyder? I said Zack Snyder, sir. 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 Snack Snyder. Snack Snyder. He tastes delicious. He tastes like Cheerios. <laughs> yeah. I just don't... I don't want to watch three hours of Justice League. It's just... How can we do Avengers and it only be like two hours? And Justice League has to be three. I don't know. I don't either. Uh, I'll be there, but um, I don't. I don't know. Are you excited for the, the two hours and fifteen minutes worth of movie? You're only gonna get like fifteen to twenty minutes of uh, of Superman. <laughs> you're so funny. <laughs> the, you know they're gonna Luke Skywalker that thing. Yeah, they're totally. Well, no, I don't think they're gonna do Varian. I think he's gonna be the third act. Third act. Yeah, show. yeah, but like they're they're saving him. Yeah, I I, I do love though. In a two hour and fifteen minute movie, they couldn't fit in Green Lantern. Well, he's gonna come in later. It's, the movie's tagline is Unite the Seven. We optimistically have six. No, it says Unite the League. I thought it said Unite the Seven. Nope, Unite I thought, the League. I, I could have swore there was a poster that said Unite the Seven. Not that I remember. I mean, earlier on, back when BVS was announced and they released that first picture of Aquaman, it was a tagline, Unite the Seven. But... Yeah, Unite the Seven. That, that on was, the new that stuff? Was, that was one of the taglines to... That was one of the taglines that they put uh, early on to Justice League. Well, maybe they realized that Green Lantern isn't that interesting the way they were going to write him and then decided to tell him go. Still, Unite the Seven only have six <laughs> characters. Plot twist, it's Martian Manhunter. <laughs> please? Actually, that'd be kind of cool. Can we get rid of Cyborg? Uh, yeah, please. Put him on the Teen Titans where he yeah. belongs. All right. Next up is actually some kind of cute news. Not really cute. Sad, but like really satisfying. IDW and DC Comics raised 165000 for victims of the 2016 Orlando nightclub shooting. For their 144 comic special, Love is Love, the book cons- consists of many one to two small strip stories, which released in December 2016. What... A price... With a price of $9.99, many noble names... Wa- that worked on the comics were Michael Bendis, uh, Michael Brian Michael Bendis, sorry, yeah, um, Oming, Simon, Gail, Scott Gail, Snyder, Gail Simone, Gail yeah. Simone, I said Simon, I said. Paul, Paul Dini. Dini, Paul Dini, Paul Dini, man, J.K. Rowling, good on her, Pat Pazin, uh, Pat Patton Oswalt. Since when is he a writer? Yeah, I'm like, I was confused. Like, is that Pat? And like, no, why is Pat Oswalt doing here? He's a mediocre comedian at best. He's funny. Yeah. I think he's alright. Patty Jenkins. And the head writer was Mark Alderico. Oh, oh Mark Andreco. Andreco. I always pronounce yeah. his name wrong. He did Death of the Hawkman. Pretty cool. Yeah. 165000 That's a lot of money. Good for them. Good for them. Yeah. That's yeah. fun news. Yeah, yeah. Um, That's cool. I, I mean, guess, it's back. I guess the, the final rat t- tally came up recently, so they put that up there. Yeah, that that, it's nice that they, you know, they try to help people out. I wish out. I could find that book. Yeah, I, I, I didn't even know that was a thing. Because it's got some good writers on here i didn't even know that was a thing like paul dini and brian michael bendis <laughs> all the harry potter fans are like you dare don't you dare she's, she's okay mediocre she's fine she's a good writer she wrote she's the, harry, the harry potter series is really good that's that is all she can do she keeps going back to that well oh well get Kingsman out, get, out, really... <laughs> get out go away i don't i don't want to podcast with you no more <laughs> Go to your timeout um, zone. <laughs> I'm already there. Kingsman 2 release date moved up from September 29th from up to September 29th, 2017, avoiding a potential collision and battling with Blade Runner 2049 on October 6th. I think that's smart. Yeah. Um, why? Why compete with a movie that might give you like? I'm not saying that Kings. I think Kingsman is the superior. It's gonna do well. I think as a film, it's but against superior Blade film. Runner, like that, that film's had like 30 years to just kind of gather an audience. True. I don't think Blade Runner is gonna do as well as Kingsman two, but I do see it kind of as one of those. Why? Why even tempt fate? We want the second yeah. one to do well. You know, they kind of want to. They want to build a series out of this. They want to build uh, a, a a movie series out of this, which is fine. So you want to? This is still early second film. You want to make good second strong start. So you have to. You want to move the date up a little bit. That way you can avoid it. And not just a little bit. They're moving up. Um. They're moving up a uh, almost a whole week. Yeah. Good on them. I mean, 
there still might be a little well, bit no, of, I, of, of a whole clash. Idiot. There, there's going to be a little well, bit of clash. They're hoping there. for. Opening. But hoping to get that extra week in before they want, they want to dominate before Blade the... Runner totally obliterates them. I don't think it will unless unless the film is completely bad. I don't think Blade Runner has. I don't think Blade Runner has a strong enough audience. Are you, are you, are we... I think a lot of people like Blade Runner. I don't think a lot of people are that into the new Blade Runner movie. I th- I'll do... see it, but I don't. I see it having good legs and yeah. going for a while. Like I don't the, see the it having The hardcore fans will be there. I don't see it having a strong opening that weekend. But I think this, it's smart for Kingsman to move up because you don't want to, you don't want to tempt fate. You don't even bother. Give no. yourself a good opening weekend so you can have that. So when Blade Runner 2049 comes out, even if it does do really well, you can still compete somewhat. Yeah. It also makes it easier on us because we're both we're, being, we're seeing both those movies. Oh, night. So, yeah, yeah. So I like both franchises. Speaking of a. Uh... Good franchise. Wreck It Ralph 2 title revealed as Wreck It Ralph. Wreck it, Ralph wrecks the internet. The that's a stupid title. It's so stupid. The movie is slated for March tw- March 9th, 2018 release date. That is the stupidest title I've ever so heard. So dumb. It's so dumb. Like, that <laughs> it's is so dumb. That is a clickbait title. It's very clickbaity. I know, man. I know. I, I like. Liked, I'm looking I liked forward the, to it. I liked the first one. Um, I don't know why we need to have a sequel. I don't either. I'm. Where else could this character possibly go? He's I kind of I, already. I did. was. I'm looking forward to Wreck-It Ralph too, hoping that they fix the only problem I had with Wreck-It Ralph was that it wasn't. It was a movie for gamers about gaming, and it didn't have much. <laughs> if he goes up against Neon Cat and Shrek memes. <laughs> it's the, Please, it's the movie for memes. <laughs> Um, Pepe. <laughs> I think what's I, I, I the only problem I have with Ralph is that they didn't they didn't give us as a, a gamer audience enough. So I'm hoping that's what Rucker Ralph two does. Hey man, it had Cubert in but there. But come on, <laughs> whatever. It had Sonic the Hedgehog for all but ten seconds. Uh, had Bowser there and uh, Satine. Th- 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 thanks, Satan. Uh, it's Satine. Yeah, I just I don't really. Uh... It's Satine. I, I think it's fine. I don't care enough, really. Like, I'll go see it, but it's just like, look, guys, I'm you're riding s- that sequel wagon really hard. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I wanna say what I said about, I'm gonna say about Rick Ralph's sequel, like I said, like Kung Fu Panda sequel. Do we need it? No. Am I looking forward to it? A lot, yes. So. Yeah. Uh, well, whatever. I don't know. Uh, next up is a movie that's not gonna happen. Joss Whedon is set to helm the, a new DC film. Batgirl. Are you all excited? It's not happening. It's not happening. If it's going to happen, it won't happen for six years. I guarantee it. Stop announcing Batman-related movies. Announce other freaking yeah, characters. Stop announcing Batman-related movies. That way, when I hear them, I don't get depressed knowing that I really want that. It's never going to happen. I'm talking about give me some variety. You're not. They're not going to happen. Mario, well, they if, could announce a Superboy movie. You are not going to get it. Well, which Superboy are we talking about? It doesn't matter. They are we talking a, about, like... You know what? They could announce a Supergirl movie. You're not going to get it. You're not going to get these movies. These movies are not coming out. And if they do come out, it's going to be years from now. They are not going to fund these films when Justice League isn't going to do well and Wonder Woman isn't going to do well. And yes, I know you're thinking, well, you don't know that movies haven't come out yet. No, I know that. I don't sound like that. Not you, people online who the avid DC fan. I don't uh, sound def- like that. The avid DC film defenders who can't seem to get their head out of the butts long enough to realize that their that their franchise is trash. I don't sound their like only that. good film in that franchise is Man of Steel, and Man of Steel is just okay. You're just okay. It, Mario, think about it. The best film. <laughs> and Even Bobby DC- agrees. You're just okay. <laughs> we all know that. All right, you should feel some pride. The best film in the DC Cinematic Universe right now is the Superman film. And the worst You're film is the only film with Batman in it. You're darn tootin'. Yeah. That's odd, man. I really love that odd, personally. But uh, uh, it's not going to happen. Don't get excited. I do think Joss Whedon's, I do think Joss Whedon's going to stay. I do think Joss Whedon's going to do things for this universe. I don't think it's going to be Batgirl. And if it is Batgirl, it's not gonna be for a while. So don't get your don't get your uh, hopes up. What do you think? I get nothing. Yeah. Uh, assuming that these do come to pass, though, it'd be nice to have a little variety. These guys... aren't Mario. No, assuming that they do. These, these films, 
if Batgirl happens, it happens four years from now, five years from now, after the second Justice League movie. Yeah, no, I, I obviously got that. But, like, and Gotham City Sirens, not Second happen. Suicide Squad. Well, that's... That I'm loosely tied into Batman. Uh, Nightwing, now Definitely. Batgirl. Not going to happen. That, that's Either that's one of those four Batman-related films. Out of all Suicide Squad isn't Batman-related. Harley Quinn, Joker. Uh, Joker Killer is Croc. confirmed for it. Not Batman related though. Killer Croc. These aren't yes. Just because characters are been were just because the characters have been in, released in a Batman related thing does not mean the film involving other characters is a Batman film. It's not. I'll give you I'll give you Gotham City Sirens because if they do it right they're gonna do a main a Batman team. I give you Batgirl and I'll give you Nightwing. Suicide Squad is not a Batman film. Calm down. Just give me a Doctor Fate film and we'll call it even. That's not gonna happen either. At least not for a while. I'm telling you, these films aren't going to happen. You can sit here and like, well, well, if they do happen, they're not happening. They're not. They're just not going to happen. And if they do happen, they're going to happen in a long time from now. We're going to see a Supergirl movie before we see a Batgirl movie. I guarantee that. We already had one in 1984, and it was terrible. How many bad Superman movies have we had and we're still getting more? Calm down. How many bad Batman movies have we had? You want to compare notes? Let's compare I'm notes. Just saying. You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Let's get nuts. I'm just saying that... What kind? Cashews or peanuts? It, I'm just saying, for in a universe, you're not looking at, okay, we've done this and it was bad before. Yeah, it was bad before, because you're doing it wrong before. Let's do it right now. Like, we had a... We've had... We had a... Fan, how many Fantastic Four movies have we had? Three. Four. Because you got the Roger Corman one. That's what I was trying to say. There's, I'm pretty sure there's four. Um, How many, like... We've had a Catwoman movie. We're still going to get her in Gotham City Sirens. I mean, come on. Just because it's bad doesn't mean they're not going to try again. But this is DC. They're going to fall flat on their face. All right. They're going to fall flat on their face. These things are not going to come to pass. We will see a Supergirl movie before we see a Batgirl movie. I guarantee that. I guarantee it. We'll, we will see a... We will. I, I can tell you right now. We're going to see a Cyborg movie before we see a Nightwing movie. I don't want a Cyborg movie. Neither do I. Next up is a game I could honestly care less about. Destiny 2 has been announced. It's supposed to release in September 8th. Woo. It's an MMO I don't have any friends to play with, so... I don't... I got nothing. Eh. I never played There it. was this whole leak thing to where I guess they have to release a Destiny game a year or something like that. They have to make a Destiny game this year and a Destiny game next year. So, if that's true, this game's gonna fall on its face and so is in the one after it. I don't think that this series really needed a sequel. Personally. I just, I, this new one was fine. It's not bad, it's just fine. I don't know why you just can't continue expanding on that. We haven't gotten, if we, if we get to a new console generation, then I would say we need a Destiny 2. But we're not. Just keep going with Destiny 1. You're doing fine. Just keep updating that one. But that's just me. People disagree. I, I, I really have I know. nothing on it. I'm not I, I really, yeah, same here. I, I know Austin put it on here because it's something. At least it's newsworthy. Yeah. But. It's a thing. It's a thing, it's yeah. A th it's a thing and a half. That's how I feel. Well, I guess we got the comics next. Yep. Really, really, really light week. Yeah. Most of this is just going to be Christian talking about how everything was bad. Um, Not everything's bad. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, well, okay. Well, we got Batgirl Annual Number 1 written by Hope Larson and art by Anaki Miranda. I think we share the similar feeling on this one. The first story is okay. The second story is really boring. Yeah. Also, I hate that stereotype villain yeah i don't he's stupid he talks in hashtags and <laughs> his so s's bad. are replaced with z's like what for reals like yeah You're, yeah you, you it, wrote a character they're, there they're, Ooh. They're, they're fighting the biggest dude bro on the internet i'm just like god that's stupid he's like show me the goods you expect them to to show you their tits that's yeah. not how that works we should know. <laughs> <laughs> I sit to Mario all the time. And he's always just like, no. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like the first story. I didn't, I don't, I didn't know that this is the first time Batgirl and Supergirl have met in the new, since new 52. I, I thought read, they met I don't before. read Batgirl. You're not really missing out on much. N yeah. Well, based on this one annual, I can, I much. can say that it's a safe bet that i'm not missing anything i mean it's kind of cool penguins in it right now so that's something it's something yes hope larson isn't a bad writer she's just a little full of herself i feel 
And you can you, you can read it in this book. You can tell a little so she's a little full of herself. Yeah, just a bit. Um, at least it's actually tying into something that's going to be going on in Supergirl, which yeah, is cool. I, I thought the Batgirl Supergirl dynamic was really cute. Yeah, I'd like to see more of that. Mm -hmm, so would I. Oh, I, would, I would actually like to see a Batgirl Supergirl book. Please. But not written by Hope Larson. No. I mean, if you're not going to give us Batman Superman, fine. Just give us Batgirl Supergirl. Yeah. Or like, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, we already have Super Sons, so that's got to... Yeah. That fills that slot a little bit. I was going to say Nightwing and Super. Give Blue me an Ace and dead. Crypto book. No. Please. Moving on. They, they'll talk to each other. Maybe an Ace and Crypto one-shot. That'd be really cool if they did for the Super Sons annual, it was an Ace and Crypto one-shot. <laughs> <laughs> super, and they call it and they called it super dogs, or super mutts. Bobby's mouthing something. I can't quite make out what she's saying. I think I think she's I think she's all for it. She, oh, like she's writing. One... She's writing. Oh my god! Oh, bat, and bat, bat cow. cow. <laughs> bat cow. Move for justice. Well, if that's the case, then we got to include Comet the super horse. Uh, what was the other one? Um, Beppo the super monkey. No, there's... Streaky the super cat? There's so many other bat... Uh, the bat... I can't remember. I can't remember what the bat's... Like, the actual Batman bat's name was. The... It, 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 it was, Batman said so many, like, car like Bat? He, I'm pretty sure it was something stupid like that. He said so many, like, animal sidekicks at some point. And they only last, like, an issue or two. Yeah, and they I mean, go look away. at Damien. Like, Damien's quite the animal. Yeah, he is. Let's, let's, let's go on to the next one. Uh, next up, we got Booster Gold Flintstones Annual Number One, and it's written by Mark Russell and art by R R Rick Leonardi. You know, after I finished this book, I think I was a little mean about it. I actually really liked this. I don't think it was the best thing ever. I think the Booster Gold Flintstones story was cute, was fun. It didn't make much sense, but it was Booster Gold being Booster Gold, and the Flintstones being genuinely confused. They didn't explain much, but they didn't have to. It was a fun ride. The, the Jetson story was terrible. I saw the design for Rosie the Robot, and it made me sad. It, it, it was very sad. It just doesn't look like Rosie. It doesn't. What, what about uh, uh, Astro? Did he look yeah, stupid? He looks fine. He looks like a dog. Oh, okay. I actually don't remember. Oh, was Jane hot? Uh, kind of. <laughs> Because Jane was like the hottest I'm one on the show. I'm getting uncomfortable now. Can we move on? It's not a question. It's getting really weird. <laughs> hey, man. Don't don't be knocking the Jetsons. Uh, well, next up, we got a book that Christian absolutely loved. The Dark Knight 3 Master Race, number 8 of 9, written by Frank Miller and Brian Azzarello, and art by Andy Kubert. It's terrible. Move on. No, no, it's no, no, awful. No, no, no. It's an awful book. Okay, so we've got Batman Resurrected from the... Lazarus Pit, but none of the negative repercussions of that, that, that wouldn't be last. Yeah. No. Okay. And none of the negative repercussions of it. It's stupid. It's a stupid book. It's a stupid series. It's dumb. It's art is terrible. <coughs> Which is really weird because Kubert is a good artist. I don't know why his art looks awful in this. I think it's because it's has to go keep the terrible style that is um, Miller, Frank Miller's yeah. His art. design... Frank Miller's design for Wonder Woman is absolutely atrocious. Yeah, it's ugly. It's ugly and weird and just uncomfortable looking. It looks like a butt. It does look like a butt. It's a dumb book. Don't it's get a, it. It's, it's bad. Just Christian, don't bother getting it. It's such a waste of your time. Why would you buy this? It's such a waste of time. Christian Sped read through it because he wanted to get it over as fast as possible. Yeah, and I still felt like I wasted my time. It's funny because he was in misery. <sighs> yeah, that's right. You keep laughing. Keep laughing. <laughs> Wait till Frank Miller does Superman. He's already done Superman. I know. Again. Uh, I know. Hurts, doesn't it? Hurts, doesn't it? Continue. Hey, man. Batman just keeps getting hit by him. So that's that's your cross to bear. Keeps, that's your cross to bear, going, buddy. Because Frank Miller did one good thing with the original Dark Knight books. One good thing. And that was he made Batman darker again. He yeah. made Batman adult again. That was the only thing that book did. It was historically important. Was it a good story? Absolutely not. Agreed. Okay. <laughs> you thought I was going to troll you. <laughs> uh, next up, we got Justice League of America number three, written by Steve Orlando and art by Ivan Reyes. Meh. It's eight. It's eight. Uh, better than the last issue. Things actually yeah. happen. I would appreciate the uh, the made up country names not being so I think consonant and vowel heavy. Weren't a couple of them real? No. 
I'm not quite sure. I don't know. I'm not a geographer. I think before we call them fake, let's make sure they were fake. Well, they all sounded fake because they were just a bunch of consonants. <laughs> My whole thing is that, like, is the next issue the last issue of the story? Is it? I hope. I'm done with this story. The villain's boring. He is so boring. Really, 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 really boring. I've seen him done before everywhere else. And he was more interesting. Not this exact character, but like that, uh, yeah, that this, archetype. This of, you know, like the Inhumans? <laughs> or do you know Magneto? It, it's not It's not good. It's not bad. It's just I, I haven't been wowed yet. No, I just there's nothing about this villain that really stands out. Like I wanna save the world by ruling them. Like, yeah, that's gonna fly. Like <laughs> uh, Next. Yeah, I'm thinking the same thing. Next up, we got uh, Suicide Squad and Banana Splits, Annual Number One, written by Tony Bedard and art by Ben Caldwell. Yeah, this one wasn't very good. Not even the Snagglepuss one shot. No, the Snagglepuss, the Snagglepuss one shot was actually kind of boring. If I'm perfectly honest with you. Really? Yeah, it was just it was just a bit boring. I just I, just, I wasn't feeling it. Huh. I just wasn't feeling it. I wasn't feeling this book. I thought it was funny with Banana Splits being a part of the Suicide Squad and how they get arrested is really stupid. And that's funny. Wait, do they get the bombs put in their heads too? Yes! Yes! That's dark! Yes! They they kill people. It got what? Re- it went like, it went. The, the people yeah, in the, I don't the remember. Ju- the, is it like Snorf or Snorf? Snork? The elephant crushes yeah. somebody. What? Yes. No, he was like, the, he was the cute. What about Flegel? I don't remember. They had they, they put the, they put yeah, well, yeah they they had put like at one point you get this like montage thing of them putting like holding guns and putting vests on. I'm like, whoa, this is getting dark. Holy cow! If only the book were that like if only it were good, then it would be worth the price of admission. <laughs> yeah, it was that was enough to where I'm like, all right, I'll keep reading, and they're like, all right, close the book. I, I'm done. I'm good. I'm good. Cause I, I love the banana split show as a kid. Yeah. It's okay. It's stupid, but it's fun. Yeah, it's stupid fun. Well, next up, we got Titans Annual Number One, written by Dan Abnett and art by uh, Minkyu Jung. Finally, a good book. Yes, this was a really good book. I'm just like, oh god, thank you. One good book. Uh, I was desperate. We get some actual story developments out of this one. Yeah, and things happen like between characters and plot wise. I so. They have a reveal in this book. We didn't know that before, right? That wasn't a thing that was known no, before. No, nope, no. Nope. That's a big. There's a big reveal in this book, and it's uh, it's gonna change how the Titans work. Also, Wonder Woman. Man. I yeah. love her, but sometimes she can be cruel. Yeah. Also, Batman was an emo punk in this one. I mean, he's not emo. He's, he's a, troubled. He he's a... troubled. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that. Superboy is emo. You know what? He's he is totally... a living weapon. You want to know who told me that? Scott Lobdell in every issue of Superboy. <laughs> every issue. <laughs> I'm Superboy. Gonna... I'm a living weapon. I'm a living weapon. Yeah, so is Superman. Calm down. He's an emo little... He's, a little... He's an emo little turd. That's all I really got for comics. Um, I got the fourth issue of Reggie and Me, but... Our local comic store, Docking Bay 94, I guess, didn't get the second issue in. So I am missing that one. So I'm three issues behind on a five-issue miniseries. <laughs> wow. Why don't, we, uh, why don't we go somewhere and try to find it? Why don't you just John, it? John's ordering it in. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's ordering it in for me. Uh, he, I guess he just got shorted. Uh, I mean, like, you know what's been happening to him constantly? Yeah. Constantly getting shorted? Yeah, this sucks, man. It does. But, I mean, what can you do? As long as, you you know, you're subscribed to the stuff you're in usually advance, fine. usually. You subscribed late, didn't you? Um, I picked up the first issue around winter break, because that's mm-hmm. when it came out, and then I subscribed, so I might have been, like, a week late. Yeah, that happens. So, it's good. It, it it's I've read the first issue, but it, it's about, obviously, Archie's rival Reggie, but it's told from the point of view of his dog, Vader. <laughs> dog vader yeah just just too perfect <laughs> it's it's fun so i will uh i will give a quick synopsis whenever i catch up on that that's fine take your time we kind of just fell on this episode with fluff 
really. Yeah. <laughs> Best we can. So the topic of the week kind of ties into um, Garbage Day. Garbage Day was chips, uh, but the topic is about about a discussion that involves chips. So we're probably going to discuss a little bit of chips in here. But the topic comes down to um, there's a lot of – it's not really a trend we're seeing, but, but it's this thing people like to do. They like to take old TV series and re Rematch, reimagine them as movies. We saw it as chips. Um, Twenty One Jump Street. Twenty One Jump Street. We're gonna see it with Baywatch. Yeah, Baywatch. Uh, Dukes of Hazard. Oh my God, this is that's becoming super common now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, the topic of this week we felt was like, it's just such a weird thing to happen. Chips says it so poorly, but Twenty One Jump Street is pretty good. At least the first one was fine. I didn't see them so i can't comment on that one's fine like, it's not bad it's just okay and yeah. baywatch looks like it's gonna be fun yeah see my thing is <sighs> you're trying to capture something that took i'm gonna say roughly a few hundred hours yeah right yeah because like, chips, chips, chips chips was on from 77 to like 82 or 83 yeah so that's a lot of television that's 30 minutes per episode it's at least 100 hours of television uh, yeah I uh, may maybe a little less than that, and you're trying to capture the feeling of that that show in a one hour and a half movie, maybe two hour movie. Yeah, it's a lot to do, and I just I don't I'm not a big rebooting old TV series kind of guy, especially comedies or like serials or something like that oh, because it's just yeah. they're just kind of that's just kind of a waste. They've like, also been doing that a lot with television shows. Like they tried to reboot Knight Rider, and then they tried to yeah, that no, went they well. they rebooted Hawaii Five O. That went really well. And it's just like, guys, stop, be creative. Like I get it; these shows were like big things, right? Well, Knight Rider, Knight Rider wasn't a big thing when it came out. It it had a big cult following. Yeah, the fact. yeah, but like they they have some sort of fan base behind yeah. them, right? Why why are you going to take something that is loved by a lot of people and then go in a completely different direction? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to reboot something like this, you might as well go all the way and make it almost 100% um, authentic. Yeah. Like, you might as well have taken chips, put it back in what, the 70s? Yeah. When it took place? If they had done it kind of like a nice guy style thing, except with, you know, California Highway Patrol, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah. I don't know why they felt the need to um, to set it in modern day. I, I honestly think it hinders the film more than it helps it. And it's a problem with, like, with Bay- Baywatch. A lot of what makes Baywatch funny is that it came out in, what, the 80s? Yeah. That's what makes Baywatch funny. It's like, there was a lot of 80s comedy, 80s humor, and 80s stuff in it. You might as well set it in the 80s. Yeah. I, I'm not saying Baywatch is going to be bad. I actually think it's going to be really good. I think it looks hilarious. Um, I have no opinion I love doing the right I just Johnson. don't think it needs to exist. No, neither do I. And I guess it's another thing is that these films don't need to exist. Like, no, these are things that no one's clamoring for. So it's just so weird. I don't know who these films are being made for. I have no clue. Because from what I understand, people who love the Chip show don't really want this. Yeah, I've, I've seen a lot of people online that are like, they, they were fans of the show back when it was airing and stuff. Uh. And they would watch it and they would wait the entire week for the new episode to come on. And they're just like, this this movie is absolute bollocks. Bollocks? Yeah. It doesn't need to exist. And it's just weird because, like, these don't really serve an audience. It's not like it's not like movies made about TV shows. It's not like the X-Files movies, right? They take place within that universe. Yeah. And they add to the story. Not all of them are good, but... You're not trying to capture the sh- a series in one movie. You're adding to a series. It's basically a longer episode. When you're remaking something, you're attempting to capture a series, capture the feeling within an hour and a half. It's really difficult yeah. to do. I think the only one that really does it well is like the Brady Bunch movie. Now, he, it's not a very good movie by like but movie that, standards, but it, it captures the feel of, of a Brady Bunch episode, you know, and you got like all your in jokes and stuff, but you know, it still feels genuine and like a love letter to the show. Chips and every other modern remake of a 1970s, 1980s television show just feels like a slap into the face to the creators, the people involved, and everybody who sat down on whatever day that it was on who watched it. It feels like a slap in the face. And it's so specific. It's like, you know, Hollywood's run by old, like older people, like baby, like, our parents' generation or older, because these like 
the shows that they're remaking is totally their childhood, and they're trying to sell it to us. And I'm just like, there's no market for dude, it, dude. I'm like 22. I've seen Chips. Oh yeah, so have I, I think Chips is fine. I never got into it. Like yeah, I've seen like, a couple I've episodes. I've seen Baywatch. I think Baywatch is fine. I should. I, uh, well, you know what? I'm lying. I really liked Baywatch when I first saw it. <laughs> I thought it was great. I don't know who I'm trying to fool. I'm the kind of guy who likes Baywatch. But it's like, I'm not, no one's, no one my age or no one who's, you're, you're selling this to is asking for this. Well, though, we're going to make this movie. They're going to see what it was like when I was a kid. And they'll appreciate it when I was a kid. Like, dude, no one in your age bracket's going to come and see this movie. Yeah. They're not. Like, our parents' generation, I mean, they see movies, but unless it's something they really, 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 really want to see, they're not saying it. If they were to make an X Files movie reboot, that's the only film I could see my mom like clamoring to see, like TV yeah, reboot. Yeah. But like, they're not gonna do that because that's stupid. The people who own X Files are like, no, we'll just yeah. add seasons and add movies. Yeah. Like, yeah. Duh. <laughs> now I'm gonna be upfront and honest. I've only seen a handful of episodes of Chips, right? Yeah, I've only so seen. I, I, I only saw maybe like five or six. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't say episodes. that I am a huge fan of Chips. Like, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed what it's I saw. Funny. But I wouldn't say that I'm a hardcore, dedicated fan. Nevertheless, I will stand up for the television show and everything that it stands for based on principle. Because, like, say, for example, they decided to go ahead and try and do a Hollywood movie version of Happy Days. Now, I love Happy Days. I have seen almost every single episode more than once, at least maybe five like times. I paid $60 to go meet Henry Winkler. Did right. you really? Yes, I did. How was he like? Really nice. Is he? That's good. I was, I was starstruck because okay. that's that was one of my heroes. You know, I, I adore that show. I, now, yelled, if they... all, I yelled all hail the Phoenix King when I saw uh, Luke Skywalker, so. <laughs> but if they were to make a live action Happy Days movie, mm-hmm. I would be insulted. I would be infuriated. I would yeah. refuse to watch it. I would boycott it. Because it's, just... it's, it's because I know... That it would not be a love letter to the show. It'd be like, hey, look at it. It was set in the 50s. Her to her to her. Elvis. I'm just, it just surprises me that you liked Happy Days. I love Happy Days. You know what? It's like Archie in a lot of ways. Yeah. Richie, Richie Cunningham, man. <laughs> makes sense. It was a time where I actually remembered and like... I, there was a time when I knew the address for the Cunningham home in the show. I... That's kind of creepy. <laughs> it's a little weird. I... I think the problem is that, with, especially with Chips and Baywatch, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. They're at the point now where they can't remake anything that hasn't already been remade at some point. So they're really scraping the bottom of the barrel. Like, with the It, it's coming out. And that's... Uh, it looks... I, the trailer looks great. It I just have no cool. desire to see it. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm going to see what it comes out and see what the people are saying about it before we make a decision. It might even be terrible. Might have to see it. Yeah. It might be great. We might want to see it. But, like, that's the thing is that they're obviously... These people are really getting to the point where they can't remake any... Because you can only remake so much things. Oh, yeah. We're getting to the point where someone's going to try and remake um, Citizen Kane. If they do, I will burn Hollywood to the ground. <laughs> if they try to remake The Godfather, somebody's going to get burned. I'm a, I, I'm a cut a fool. I could see Godfather because Godfather is based on a book, is it not? Yeah. I could totally see them try to... They like, better not... They, they stay away from that film. Yeah, Godfather... The first Godfather is perfect. Like, that... Leave it the words. Scarface, I get. I get. People are all mad about. It. They're not remaking Scarface. They're telling. They're they're going to tell the actual story of Scarface. Yeah. That yeah, it's a remake, but it's a more true to the actual events. Maybe they might even get a Cuban but actor to play the, the Cuban second, character. This is the second remake of that film, though. So. But I mean, like the first one wasn't very good. The I, second I one. I can't was, speak to that because I've not seen that. The second one with Al Pacino. I liked it. Oh yeah, it's great. I mean, you got an Italian guy playing a Cuban guy, which always will always <laughs> always bug me because he does not play a convincing Cuban man. And I think the third one, from what I understand, they're trying to make it more realistic to the actual story. Maybe they'll get a Cuban guy to actually play the Cuban character. I think they're, I think they didn't get Oscar. I think they got Oscar Isaac. At least it's Hispanic. If they get Oscar, Oscar if, oh well, not see, Oscar. I was mildly interested no, the for guy, half a the second. The guy who played uh, Rogue One in Rogue One. Oh, oh, okay. Who played Cassian? Yeah, Cassian. I'm sorry. I, I don't know why I said Oscar Isaac. My mouth slipped. I'm mildly interested now. Oh, they got a great director for it. I got it. It's think, just the principle. I think of it, they man. got the I, Coen, I think they got the Coen Brothers for that. The ones that did the Garfield movies. <laughs> <laughs> 
Please no. <laughs> Please no. <laughs> Poor. <laughs> Do you have any regrets, Garfield? Garfield. Oh, poor guy. Poor, poor guy. <laughs> Would you like to tell that story or shall I? <laughs> Zombie Land, man. <laughs> yeah, Diego, uh, Diego Luna. He's oh. gonna, he's gonna play Tony, uh, Tony Montana. Oh. Um. Wait. Who? I just think that there's just this desire to kind of real, real fast. We we did kind of skip over there. Um, the story behind Garfield is uh the fat joke is um bill murray was in told Zombieland. yeah but he didn't mention the story in zombie land oh bill murray was asked if he wanted i don't know how this happened but he was asked if he wanted to do a garfield movie done by the cohen brothers done by the cohen's uh, he thought like it was the he like the fargo cohen, cohen brothers yeah he thought he thought like Oh brother, where art thou, Cohen Brothers or Fargo Cohen Brothers? He thought like apparently these are people that he like he's wanted to work with the actual Cohen Brothers for a while. Now, so he does the film, not realizing it's not this Cohen Brothers, find out it's not this Cohen Brothers, already on the contract, kinda in trouble, has to do the movie anyways. So that explains the first movie. Nothing the second explains. movie. <laughs> Woo! But yes, it, it's Fargo Cohen Brothers. Like Fargo and Oh Brother Where Art Thou Cohen Brothers. Yeah. Ethan and Joel Cohen. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for that, because just... that's a good main act, good lead actor with two um, talent, and you know the Coen Brothers aren't going to do it unless they have unless they have something to do it with. They have a, they have a reason. It's the Coen Brothers. Yeah, they don't do anything for not without a reason. So, <sighs> back to the topic at hand. So what we're saying, this is definitely like these 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 television shows being made in movies. These are definitely trying to capture. Whatever they can in the remake market. I just don't understand this desire to capitalize on 80s stuff. Like I told you, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. They're scraping the bottom of the barrel. I mean, the 80s were kind of cool in terms of entertainment, but like... Mm, 90s was better. Uh, 90s you're such a 90s kid. Well, so are you. But the 90s, <laughs> the, the 90s took everything that the 80s did and did it better. And more you mean refined. made it louder <laughs> with stupid colors? That's not true. There was a lot of good shit in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. Late 80s. Late yeah. 80s, 90s is where everything's at. Yeah. Friends. Friends is great. Friends is Friends is a hallmark Friends. of television. Friends sucks. Friends is a hallmark of television, whether you like it or not. Bite me. Friends is a hallmark of television. I'm not a... Look, my mom loved Friends. Spice Girls. Spice Girls is fun. They suck. Shut up. They suck. You shut your fat whore mouth. No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're about not topic. Yeah. Uh... Let's move on to... Uh, so we've already kind of discussed it, but let's move on to Garbage Day. Garbage Day! As we said it before, blows. this, this <laughs> week's Garbage Day is Chips, uh, directed by a moron, written by the same moron, and starring Michael Pena. And the moron who wrote and directed this. Michael Pena's in it, all I care about. Kristen Bell's in this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where's she? I don't know. I, I don't remember. I lost interest. Yeah, so did I. I don't think this movie is as bad as everyone says it is. It's not very good. It's not very good. My Okay, my thing with this is, one, the humor is absolutely terrible. There are funny moments. This, Some. This is, not, this is not a fist fight moment to where fist fight me and you were just like, why? Yeah, this but a, like... This for, actually got us to laugh. There's a couple moments in there where I was actually kind of laughing. Like, this is funny. I'll give you that movie. There was like maybe one joke that I really laughed at, and it's where like the guy gets like shot. A, a second Twice. time. A second time. Twice. <laughs> it's, it, it, that was really funny. Everything else is just <laughs> ball jokes. Not everything. Majority of it's ball. Not majority, ball and sex jokes. Not majority. All the problem is they're so bad that those are the ones that high, that stand out the most. The rest of them are just okay. There's a sequence where the main point of the joke is that Michael Pena doesn't want to look at uh, Dax Shepard's junk because he's naked. And he has to carry him to a bathtub because he's incapacitated. And he ends up just getting his face all up in his crotch. That was a scene. Okay. Something we're going to point out, me and you were discussing. This movie... Is balls. Is sexist as hell. Oh, yeah. So, we get, I want to say, two to three full-body nude shots yeah. of women. Three pairs of tits. And just and just a flurry. Like, it wasn't just three. There was a flurry of boob of uh boob shots and then a flurry of just like like the male gaze 
yeah. uh, if you will, of just women and just women stretching. I, I don't think there were any. Ga- I don't think there were any gays in this movie. No. <laughs> There was one. There was one. Was there? Yes, they made very clear he was gay. Remember the whole joke? I was like, the blonde's cute. I want the I want the uh, Hispanic one. Oh, that guys, the one guy. I like. I I'd, I'd take both. I'm like, that wasn't funny. That was dumb. Yeah, that's right. That was a thing. But you were saying. But we have all these shots of women, just just flirty women. The one time we get a naked guy, they pixelate out the penis. They blur out the penis. It's already has a better rating. They blur out the penis. Now, I'm not one to harp on this kind of thing, because like, I'm a straight dude. I, I like chicks. But, but, but like, it, 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 one time it, it, it was, was a pretty glaring problem. Like, it was one of those things, like, it happened, and Mario was, goes to me and goes, that's sexist as hell. And I'm like, yeah, it is. It's so screwed up. And we were just, like, really baffled that you could have avoided that shot in general, and it just would have been tons of female exploitation and we've been like all right whatever it's hollywood this is a stupid movie it's trying hollywood. to it's trying to explore whatever it can but it, it does it goes with showing his penis but doesn't show it if they blur it out it's the only thing that blur out in this movie which is really weird that that's the line they draw it's just so incredibly <laughs> sexist it's, it's so stupid it is so it's stupid. A stupid movie written by very stupid people one stupid person well okay and directed by that same stupid person, Dax Shepard. Like I said, the comedy isn't funny. They do not know what tone they want to take with this. They want to go with like goofy, zany, stupid stuff, like slapstick comedy almost. Is, are you are you getting snacks? I'm getting a mint. I was having a. a, a, a I'm listening to you. Keep uh, talking. Okay. Well, and then they they do like the serious shootout bit or whatever, where like people are losing fingers and and. You know, I'm giggling more at that than I was at the entire movie. Just the, like, the like, nonsense. Yeah, like they do some. Like a guy gets decapitated in this film. Like they they try to have all the serious uh, cops and and crooks uh, nonsense, but but then they try to don't throw your rapper on the ground, sir. I live in here. Calm down. <laughs> but then they do all this crap comedy, and it's like decide on what tone you want to tank. Because if yeah. you're gonna do like goofy stuff fine do it you know but if you you're, you're also trying to balance that out with some pretty serious stuff choose you you can't have your cake and eat it too yeah. in it, fact the cake is a lie shut up <laughs> stupidest stupidest joke I've ever. <laughs> we sat through chips and you're telling me that every joke in there was not as stupid as the one that i just made yes there were some good jokes in that movie so, that hurts my feelings. So, well, yours is an overused joke. At least theirs were dumb, but I, I was just looking at your poster on the wall. Bobby likes that poster. I'm not a very creative person. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just, I don't know. This movie suffers from a lot. The, this movie has the makings of a good comedy. Like a good comedy, you need to have something. In the movie has to be serious. The story or something has to be a serious. And the jokes come from the, the, the situations that get them in the positions. Like, there is some, like, a great example is, like, Caddyshack. Caddyshack, the one serious thing, is trying to, this kid trying to go to college. Yeah, everything and, else is just screwball comedy. Yeah. Um, Ghostbusters, these guys are trying to run a business. Yeah. And they're actually scientists studying these things, and they're brilliant inventors. One of them is just trying to get laid. Well, that's a side effect <laughs> of the rich there's actual serious stories within comedies what makes a good comedy is that it makes you laugh regardless the, the seriousness is just supposed to give you an outline and the zany stuff all ties in the yeah. problem with chips is that it doesn't clear it doesn't really this the serious story that it has is also zany and it doesn't help that when they tried to make the serious it up a little bit so you can get more jokes it it gets a little too serious. Yeah. Like the heroin addicted son. Yeah. And they try to make a joke out of him getting his head, de- out of him getting decapitated, and you feel bad more than anything. Yeah. It's like, because Vincent D'Onofrio plays the villain, and he goes up, he goes a... up to like Dax Shepard, and he's like, "You, you killed my son. I got a bone to pick with you." And then Dax Shepard's like, "Well, I think you, you really got a problem with the wire, because the wire was the one that you know cut his head off." It's like that's not funny. That's really fucked up. Yeah, that's that's cruel, man. Like, 
Another thing. I'm listening. There are, from what I know, two Easter eggs in this film. One of them is the chips theme that's played very briefly. They didn't earn it. The second one is a, at least a four-minute cameo with uh, Eric Estrada, who is who is Ponch in the original TV series. See, they really didn't earn that. I liked that. That made me happy. I'm like, okay, I got it. I got Estrada at least. And this is funny. They didn't earn it. He's a funny guy. Oh, he's a funny he's guy. A funny. Just guy. watch him in Cool Cat Saves the Kids. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, how about you stop? <laughs> no. No? No. My affinity for terrible entertainment knows no bounds. Then why didn't you like chips? What? Why didn't you like chips then? Because I have some class. <sighs> yeah, this movie's not very good. Not much to say about it, just not... It's not, not worth your time. No, it's definitely not worth your time. Don't see it. Money. If you really want to see it, wait. Just wait. Wait till it comes out in DVD, then download it. <laughs> it comes on Amazon, then watch it then. It's the kind of movie that you'd make a drinking game around. Yeah. Every time somebody says something unfunny, take every three t- shots. <laughs> every time Michael Pena, every time Michael Pena's Sex Edition comes up, God, his entire character is I like to bone people, and I'm like, okay, movie, okay. It's not funny. All right, that was garbage day. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got one more thing. I will give this movie two points. One for playing Nazareth's uh, Hair of the Dog, okay. and another one for playing Black Sabbath's Paranoid. I'll also give it that the cinematography was good. Yeah. It was good So it gets three points. Yeah. That's all it really gets. It's good. It looks good. I'm going to give you three other points for the, the, the women, because I'm, I'm a pig. You are a pig. Oink. I'm not going to give it to it, because it was, it was incredibly sexist. It made, oink, me un- it made me uncomfortable. It, kinda, it made me uncomfortable, too, really. Um, next up is Matinee Morning. And this matinee morning was Logan. We actually did see it on a matinee and in the morning. Yeah, surprising. Uh, so, first up, me and you have a couple of things to say about this movie. We're gonna start with the, we're gonna start with the positive. That Logan was directed by James McGold, written by James McGold and Scott Frank, starring Hugh Jackman, Patrick Stewart, Daphne Keen. Daphne Keen. Is that was that her name? I, I guess so. Yes. And uh, a bunch of other people that no one really cares about. <laughs> Those are the two main ones. Okay, so I think to start off, let's start with the positive. This movie looks gorgeous. Yeah. It is beautiful. Action. Shot wonderfully. Action shots are shot well and edited together in a you know what? very nice manner. Action shots? Cool. Yeah. You Done can actually, really well. You can tell what's going on. Mm-hmm. And you don't, you don't get sick. The like rated R chips. ratings? The action shots and the rated R rating, worth it. The brutality was there. I felt every hit. Like, you can feel it. It's very powerful. So because of that, it's a fine film. It's okay. Those are where the movie, those those are the things that movie makes, that, that's good. Well, acting's pretty solid. Okay, you know what? Yeah, the acting's fine. I think considering the script, the acting was well done. The writing and the script, the acting was well done. I'll give you that one. So do you want to start or should I? It was every boring. every problem in this film. It was boring. It dragged on 40 minutes longer than it needed to do. Everybody, everybody has no purpose to be there. Some characters don't need to be there at all. Nobody has any character arcs. Everything that's supposed to be a character arc just had done in the last 20 minutes. <laughs> everybody says in a bunch of swear words that they really probably shouldn't even be saying, especially Patrick Stewart's character, who is completely out of character in this film. Logan's just grouchy. He's got no reason to even go on this trip. Why is he even saving these kids? <laughs> I no, continue. You're on a roll. <laughs> I'm enjoying this. Uh, I got a couple things I'm gonna add, but no, you're going. But you're doing fine. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Why are they playing Jim Croce? That this takes place in 2029. That song came out in like 71 or 72. That song's at least 50 years old by that point. There would be no point in hey, playing that. Hey, it's, it's a like, great song, but there'd be no point in playing Johnny it. Johnny Cash music in here. That they. They, they softened me up a little bit with the Johnny Cash music. It'd be like walking into a convenience store and hearing somebody play, like, Heartbreak Hotel. As great of a song as it is, mm-hmm. there's no re- there's no chance that there's going to be playing in a convenience store. Why would they play something that's 50 years old? That's fair. That, that makes no sense. The references are completely not within the time realm. Oh, I'm going to get on that. I'm <laughs> Freddy Krueger reference? That. Yeah, no, that doesn't belong. No. Uh, villain was stupid. 
I think I think I've exhausted all my stuff. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna clarify a few of these that you you only you stood by. First up, okay. First up, as a franchise movie, this movie is awful. In fitting in the the X Men franchise, it devalues every other movie because everything they've done to make a better future it gets ruined in the end anyways. They confirm that all goes go yeah. all goes to hell anyways. Yep. Um. Then sorry, music. The next problem. As a film, it suffers from two issues. Certain things run for way too long. Certain things don't happen at all. They try to set a father-daughter motif between Ak- Logan and X-23, right? Mm-hmm. They don't give us enough time for when the... Uh, no spoilers. The best we can. They don't give us enough time to properly set up that relationship. Yeah. At all. There's nothing there that really sets that up, really builds that relationship. So when they, by the third act, when they're trying to like cash in on all the, all, on that, it isn't satisfying. The references, my God, did I want to shoot myself? Because they were terrible. There are X Men comics in an X Men universe. And a Wolverine action figure. The yes. fat, the fat kid holds one at uh at the very end. So. I don't think that this is a society that would franchise out the X-Men. No. Mainly because they're scared of them. Yeah. I don't know when these comics were supposed to be made, but they weren't made at the time the X-Men existed. No. It wouldn't have happened. The Wolverine action figure, that was dumb. Yeah. It was only there so they could sit there with the comics and say, so the, the studio can sit there and say, we don't have to follow this exactly. Because everyone was getting on them for not following Logan, the Logan, the old, old man, man Logan? Logan, the old man Logan story. Well, yeah, because the majority of the characters are in that are over licensed with Marvel. Yeah, that's ninety percent of your story. Yeah, no. <laughs> so Fox's way of getting mad at fans for not for criticizing them for not keeping true to the stories that they're representing is having a character wave a comic in someone's face and call it like childless garbage. Child, this child is garbage. a story. Yeah, like, this is for children. This is for little children. I'm like, you need to grow up out of this. And I'm just like, you know, movie, you're not winning me over. You're not helping your case. You're not. <laughs> you're, you're frustrating me because you instantly devalue the audience that's paying to see this film. Luckily for them, no one really cared enough to point that out. But uh, there is no character development in this film. I'll give you. There, There is... There, no, 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 I'm wrong. There's character development. Screaming. That's as much character development we get. It's a lot like X-Men Origins Wolverine and the Wolverine. When Wolverine screams, he apparently is developed. For every Wolverine scream, one person develops character trait, apparently. And Christian. Christian. Yeah. Ah. Character development. I am a fully realized character. <laughs> I'm a real character. My impression is over. As a film, there's just things like you don't need the whole bit with, and I'm not spoil this. Who cares? With Logan trying to help Professor Xavier P. Didn't need to be there. Didn't need because it didn't do anything. Didn't pay off. We we know he's old. We know he needs help. You've established you within ten minutes. You established that just fine. There's a lot of things that professor xavier's character especially was butchered in this film mm-hmm. he was not in character and i don't care if the excuse is oh well he's old well no xavier was old in all other films well he's going senile well no this isn't his character there's nothing here there's no they don't give us a reason why he acts the way he acts yeah nothing is they, they they hope that you're just going to accept it because he's old so he's grouchy well yeah but xavier's been old for how many movies and he's not grouchy he didn't need to say the f-bomb so many times yeah, like him cursing so many times. It's just not in his character. That is not in his character. You can go with him grouchy, fine. But the him cursing constantly, not in his character. Nope. He puts people's lives. He puts a lot of people's lives in danger because of his own selfishness. The story is trotting and tedious and boring. The writing is awful. Oh, the yeah. character writing is awful. It, it's Nobody's... super. It, it's all the cheesiness of every X Men movie I've ever seen. Without the fun. Yeah, without the fun. This movie had no fun. This, I get it. You want to make it darker, fine. But it's not... The darkness isn't that good. No. So, the problem with a dark film... 
is that when you're making a movie that's dark, you are really playing with fire. Because if it's boring, it's stupid. A dark movie is great. Like Fargo. Fargo is incredibly dark. Oh, yeah. When the wood chipper scene alone, man. Yeah. That movie could have been incredibly boring really easily. But they do it just right to where the darkness is interesting. And and you, keeps get, you, engaged. you got Steve Buscemi. So. True Detective Season 1. Season 1 specifically. is very dark. But it's interesting. Because of that, it doesn't get boring. Because you're interested in how dark it is. Logan is dark. Boring. But not very, but not very interesting. So it's boring. It dragged on for so long. They're just they want they they introduce all these like this movie has so much to say, but doesn't do a very good job saying it. And that's the problem. This movie wants to have all these things to say, but doesn't do very good. Like has this whole thing about the father and daughter motif, but then it goes with the the worst parent cliche ever do as i say not as i do Mm -hmm. you know who says that bad parents yeah i i don't care if someone's offended by that if if that's how you if that how you raise a child the do as i say not as i do ideology that's bad parenting you set an example you said you you are the parent you set an example if you can't follow the example you want your kid kid to follow then yes you have a problem you need to fix it Mm -hmm. and that's the problem with logan is that there's no point where he grows. He just stays the same. He, he does nothing. And what does X-23 become? A little less angry. A little. Well, she doesn't speak for the so, film. She just so, screams. So less angry that she speaks in a heavy accent. It's not like Eleven in Stranger Things to where, yes, she's troubled and she has a lot of rage and anger built up. But she doesn't scream. She just scowls and this is like this built up tension and she's afraid and all, everything's shown in her face she's not yelling she's just in her face so you can see it the problem with mm-hmm. x-23 is that the actress does a great job giving the performance that she's expected to give but i can't buy the yelling got annoying yeah the yelling gets annoying <laughs> actually she just got annoying mm-hmm. i didn't like her at all i get it everyone loves this film because it's a rated r wolverine film and the rated R is deserving. Now, does that mean everything it does to get that rated R rating was good? No. The violence is all you need. Yeah. You don't need the constant. When you I swear, we're... cursing's fine. I do it all the time. Yeah. Every mouth that come out is, is something crude. I get it. Somebody would mistake him for for a sailor. I do like sailing. I'm not really like sailing. I like yeah. being on boats. You, you like you like tiny shorts too. Yeah. I don't like pants. Okay, Skipper. <laughs> You're just jelly. Because I'm, 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 I'm comfortable with my sexuality walk around my underwear. Hey, man, so am I. I ha- take your pants off right now. Okay. <laughs> there. <laughs> you happy? You fucking happy? I want you to know on this recording that he would take his pants off. He sat right down or we his legs. I didn't see anything. <laughs> He did everything kid to hide it. Now he's gonna put his pants right back on, cause he's too shy. <laughs> yeah, there it is. He tried to prove a point, but he only did was prove my point. Well, cause Bobby's here. Uh huh. That's your excuse. Okay. Turn Sorry. That the was... Howard Stern show for half a second. <laughs> <laughs> back on Logan. Logan, you thought Logan. I wouldn't do it, didn't you? You didn't do it. You hit it. I'm gonna show my junk under here. <laughs> we don't record the video. <laughs> we don't record video. How does that? That doesn't mean anything. <laughs> wow, this this episode just a series of tangents, us trying to fill time. But look, that's what this movie is: a series of tangents, just trying to it fill really time. It really is. There were like three points where I, I just looked over at Christian, like Christian, what time is it? How long is this thing? It, it it's two and a half hours of film that didn't need to be two and a half hours. Nope. Okay, it's like two hours and twenty minutes, but like it's so self-insistent. It is. It's so self-insistent, and it's just it doesn't need to be as long as it is. And if you're gonna make it this long, we there's just certain things that's lacking. Yeah, like the main villain. A reason to care. The main villain's identity infuriated me. In the scientist villain, his identity infuriates me. I'm not gonna say who because it's a spoiler. I'm not gonna yeah. determine because people want to see this film. But it infuriates me. I've never been so angry at a character reveal, and it's so like crude and just like, oh, it's just so shoot in. And I'm like, you know, movie, shut up. You're stupid. Yeah. 
Uh, if you're a Wolverine fan and you enjoy it, fine. If you like the X-Men, fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't enjoy it. Yeah. It, I like, think this movie's it, been overhyped. And I think this movie's been overly praised. Uh, let, me, let me put it this way. Okay, I've seen a handful of the X-Men films. I've seen X-Men 2. I've seen Wolverine, or like X-Men Origins Wolverine. I'm I saw so First Class. I saw snippets of uh, Days of Future Past. You would like Days of Future Past a lot. I, I, I've seen I've seen my fair share of this universe X-Men. I kind of get an idea for what, what their takes on them are. Uh-huh. That being said, I have not actively followed this franchise as everybody else has, right? People that religiously watch these movies, they get excited whenever a new announcement comes out. I'm like, okay, sure, whatever, I don't care, right? The the purpose of a film is if it's part of a franchise, you have to judge it by its own merits. And this film does not give me any kind of reason to care about the characters. It gives me no reason to... Uh to, uh, sympathize with them to uh, see where they're coming from. There's no uh, character arcs for me to really I, get I think, invested in. I, I think it's which there. It's a franchise film, so it has to be both be able to measure by its own merits and by the its addition to the franchise. Okay, yes, that too. But like, as a, as pr- almost essentially, every film should be should be looked at as through its own merits. Every film should be judged on its own. Even sequels should be how how is a film is this? But like, if you look at something like Empire Strikes Back, it still gives you motivation, reason to care about the characters, uh-huh. character arcs. Logan has none of this, and this this is no. how expect- many sequels have they had? Yeah. For, uh, it, this isn't a character that's necessarily super complicated. Wolverine's a very straightforward character. Just write a grouchy Canadian that likes chomping cigarettes and drinking whiskey and fighting. Shouldn't be that hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really unfortunate because I... Look, I went in this movie like, I'm not going to love it like everyone else. I don't like Wolverine that much. But I want at least to enjoy myself. And I came out like... I already had like checked expectations and I came out very disappointed. Yeah, I, I felt very underwhelmed. More underwhelmed. Like I went in expecting a good film. I came out with an okay film, and I didn't. I did I heard all these things. Everyone was telling me, "Oh, it's amazing. Oh, it's great. Oh, it's fantastic." I'm like, "Okay, cool. I'm not going to enjoy it as much as you are. I don't like the character, but I'm going to expect a good movie at least." And I came out I'm like, "No, I got a mediocre movie. Yeah, I got an okay movie. Like it's fine. It's the problem with this film. A lot of the times is that it's." It relies on you. It relies on the previous movie movies with the character for you to care. It doesn't give you a reason to care about the story, and that's the problem with the film. I don't care about X-23. It never gives me a reason to care about X-23. No. She's just kind of there. She's just kind of a burden, honestly. It doesn't give me a reason to mm-hmm. care about Xavier and his illness. Yeah. He honestly seems more of a problem. He, sh- he should have been killed. Like, it, that's where the when. Toward the end of the film, I'm like, he should have died. He should have died. They should have killed him before this movie. Yeah. If Logan was smart, he would have killed him. Also, I, I okay, maybe it's just because I'm not too steeped in X Men and mutant lore, mm-hmm. but it would have been nice to have known what exactly that that albino dude was doing. Like he was a, oh, a tracker they, or something. Yeah, he was a tracker. They, but they, they made, don't show they, him no, do they, it. They do. They do. Yeah, they do. They do. They oh. make it very clear that he's a tracker. You just missed. No, it. no, I caught that he was a tracker. They like, just yeah, don't show me how he does it. Yeah, they showed it. When? They says here. He they says you track. Yes, like you need to track them. Smell this. He makes it very clear that he can smell, and that's how he can, can sense things. And oh. he says I can sense mutants through smell. He says that in his own words. Oh, I must have checked out then. Uh huh. Like that was what thirty minutes into the film. Earlier. Oh, we also get a pair of tits in this one too. So that's that's a thing. For no reason. Yeah, no it was, reason. It was. Th- the problem is that, yes, as a rated R rating, it would have had this rated R rating without all the swearing, without the nudity it decided to show. It just did that to, like, push the envelope more. I'm like, why? You literally show three people get deca- decapitated. You're fine. Or more. Like, you... At one point, Logan puts his arms into a guy, slices out, and you can actually see a stream of blood come from out of his claws and just, like, go into the... It was really pretty. It was pretty looking. I'm like, wow, that's impressive. And, like, that's your rated R rating. You don't need anything else. The yeah. amount of blood in this film, you've got your rated R rating just fine. You don't need to swear every 10 seconds. No. Like, this whole moment where, where, where Logan off. freaks out when he just starts yelling, it's like, F this, F that, mother F, and just start beating on this truck. And I'm like, wow, this is very like, gratuitous, gratuitous and stupid. Yeah. But and then he passes out, and you're just like... Credits. Okay. Please. Is it, is it done now? Oh, no, we have a 30 more minutes. Ugh. <laughs> <What's happened? 
<laughs> what? I was half expecting the fat kid to have a stupid power. <laughs> <laughs> like shoots, the twink- have, the shoots kid- Twinkies or like <laughs> <laughs> seismic farts or something. There was like really subtle fat jokes in this movie, and it was just in that one. This one fat kid and him running is just like, oh my god, this is a fat joke. You guys are so mean. <laughs> it was funny though. I'm, at least it didn't make it to where like his power was to like bloat up like a like the blob or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Bouncing boy. Look, I'm not saying don't see this movie. I'm saying. This film isn't as great as everyone wants you to believe it is. It's not for me. It It's definitely not for me either. Well, an episode of Clutter's Collision, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we had a little adventure. We, yeah. we talked about some news. A little longer. I think it's a little longer than I thought Mario it was took be. off his pants. Cat didn't show me anything. Nerd. Pathetic. You can take off your pants but not reveal anything. You're such a pansy. I'm a tease. You are a tease. I'm a tease, good sir. Yes, I'm like are. fine wine. No, you're not. You're like sour milk. Ow. <laughs> All right, genuinely guys. Genuinely hurt. <laughs> this is another episode of Clutter's Coalition, where I have always just mean to my one of my, one of my best friends. But hey, what can you do? Sometimes when you hang out with someone long enough, you just you just gotta be mean. As always, like, comment, subscribe. You know, help us out. You know, comments. Let's us know how we're doing. Subscribing on iTunes, even if you have an iTunes, even if you don't have an, if you have an iTunes account, if you don't listen on iTunes. Subscribe anyways. Makes us look good. Do it. Rate it. We like to see how we're doing. We like to know how we're doing. Facebook, all that good stuff. You know, the thing we have in the extra that tells the other thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, As always. Yeah, repetition is key, I guess. Yeah, I guess. As always, guys, it's a pleasure. Pleasure doing this. We'll see you all next week. Puppy power. Another week, another episode of Clutter's Coalition, a Magnesium Studios production. Prolonged exposure to this podcast may cause the following side effects. Visiting our website at collectorscoalition.com. Listening to us on SoundCloud, Podomatic, and iTunes. Subscribing to our YouTube channel. Following us on Twitter at Collect Coalition. Following us on Instagram, Tumblr, and Facebook at Collectors Coalition. Bouts of extreme depression. Uncurable explosive diarrhea. Not being able to grow up past the mental maturity of a three-year-old. But in all seriousness, thank you for listening, and we love you all. And remember, stay nerdy, my friends.